presentation. Um, and I want this to be hopefully something that you guys can implement as soon as we get off this presentation today or even while this presentation is going on. So take notes, enjoy, uh, chime in when needed. Um, so I'm Jeff Van Note, as you see on the screen. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's Jeff Van Note Senior. Uh, make sure you put the SR at the end. There's also an account for my son that I made that hopefully at some point when he's not two and a half years old, he'll be using it. And if you guys need to email me, it's Jeff at JeffVanNote.com. So a little bit about myself, um, three things. I was selected 40 under 40 most influential mortgage people in America, all while under 30 years old. Um, I'm 34 now. I started in the mortgage business in December of 2007 in the Bronx, New York, um, as my college football career was coming to an end. It was a blessing in disguise. You know, I was obviously looking forward to hopefully continuing my football career. Um, for those of you that follow football, you might recognize the name. My uncle played for the Atlanta Falcons. And that was what my goal was. Uh, life took me down a different path. And here I am, you know, 14 years later, talking about my experiences, hopefully bringing some value into your guys' life. Um, in 2011, at age 24, I closed $31 million in purchase money mortgages. Um, it's super important to realize that because that was my best earning year in the mortgage business at age 24 in the Bronx, New York. Uh, in the collapsing mortgage real estate market from 2008, 9, and 10. And what's really important to realize is I, I closed that with 83 different realtor referral sources. 100% um, of my business was always realtor focused. And then obviously from there, you know, past clients, accountants, attorneys, but still to this day, um, I believe the realtor is the most important, especially in this market, the most important person you should be targeting because they have the hot buyers and hot sellers now that all need to move, that all need financing, you know, that all want to take advantage of obviously valuable people like yourself. Um, what we're working on now is a company called Reverify. You can go to Reverify.com and check that out after the presentation. It's a real estate and mortgage technology company that we believe is going to be the next big thing. Um, I did write two books uh, back in 2017 and 18. I wrote The Mortgage Playbook for Millennials. While everyone was sitting and saying how millennials are dumb, millennials don't have money, millennials don't have jobs, I realized that they were wrong. They had all these things, they just didn't have guidance. So I wrote this book kind of as like a, wow, like I can't believe he just said that type story. Um, so it's really cool. I incorporated some blog posts. I gave some commentary and I gave some market outlook, which uh, looks to be true today. I wrote my recent book, um, the Realtor's Cookbook, uh, which I have right here. The Realtor's Cookbook, believe it or not, I wrote it one night uh, back in February this year, believe it or not, that I sat down and said, look, I'm reading all these Facebook posts on realtors complaining, I can't get leads, I can't get leads, I don't have any money, I don't have a budget. So I wrote a book, uh, just like a cookbook, that actually details certain recipes to get leads that are very cost effective. Um, what I would recommend you all doing, obviously picking up a copy of the book, but if you have a realtor that you're looking to get business from, buy two copies of the book, take the realtor out to breakfast, lunch, or dinner, sit down and actually go through each one of the 57 ways and see how you guys can tag team getting leads together. Um, while it's important to get leads, it's more important to spend one-on-one -on -one quality FaceTime with your proposed referral partner, which hopefully will be a realtor. Um, so you can pick it up on Amazon. If anybody's interested in buying bulk, you know, 25, 50, 100 copies, you know, email me directly and I can work out a much better price than what Amazon shows. Um, but I believe that if you utilize this book, you guaranteed will develop, you know, solid real estate and realtor referral partners. Now, getting into the presentation, um, the biggest thing, reputation and philosophy, you know, while we go over what reputation, well, my belief of what your reputation and philosophy would be. I want you all to think about what do you want to be known for in your marketplace? You know, what do you want to be remembered for? A lot of people just go out there and do business, try different things and never really get to a concrete decision of, Hey, I want to be known for X, Y, and Z. Um, so on the next slide, we're going to show you what I believe are going to be the most important factors in differentiating how you're going to be remembered and what the market knows you for. So these are the most important things that I believe hit the marketplace. Um, first, obviously, immediate response time. 
I don't know about you guys, but there's nothing worse than sending a client or a realtor or an attorney a message not getting an immediate reply, especially when you have a lot of deals in the pipeline. So immediate response time is something that's common courtesy, obviously. You want to keep your boundaries, but I believe that the faster you reply, you know, the more happy and more peace of mind you'll be. Also, that person will appreciate you that much more because they know that you're going to reply and then they can move on with their decision. Whether that's getting an updated pre-approval, whether that's getting an update on appraisal status, whether that's getting an update on their commitment or their uh, clear to close. These are all things that people appreciate. So do you want to be known for, wow, the person replies back immediately or now I'm not going to hear back from them for two or three days. That's something you guys have to decide. Lowest rates, you know, everyone always wants to have the lowest rates. Everyone always wants to get the lowest rates. Um, if you want to be known for that, you know, go out there and advertise that you have the absolute lowest rates. As we all know, if you have the lowest rates, you may not be making the most amount of money, but you might be, be able to do the most amount of business. That's something you guys have to choose on your own for your own business practices. Um, one thing I always loved was getting the tough deal closed. I probably got more excited about getting a tough deal closed than actually making the money that came from the deal. It was more of a statement. Uh, it's a statement that you know what you're doing. You know that you're the expert. You know, you're never going out there trying to show anybody up by any means, but there's nothing like taking a deal another lender couldn't do, reworking it, fitting it inside your box and getting it closed. Um, and then being able to go out and market that you close this tough deal with, you know, a low credit score or high debt to income ratio um, and going into realtors and saying, hey, guys, look, like I just closed this very tough deal. If you ever have a deal that can't get done, I understand you have relationships, at least give me a call and let me know. I can help you get this tough deal closed. Um, I think that's very important for your reputation because then you'll be known as the go-to source. Um, consumer education, I think this is one of the most underutilized you know, tactics in the marketplace. If you're educating your consumer, the consumer is going to come to you first. They come to you first, you're in control, and then you pass that referral on to a realtor referral partner. Um, there's nothing a realtor doesn't want more than, than a qualified buyer um, or a qualified seller that also is going to become a buyer for them. I think if you take advantage of that consumer education, you'll be way ahead of the game. And social media is a great place and great platform to do that. Uh, next, realtor social events. Um, do you want to be known as the guy or girl that has social events for realtors? Happy hours, seminars, home buyer seminars, home seller seminars, credit education seminars. And these are all things that I really believe will help you stand out in a marketplace, especially now. Um, I like the combination of a virtual and in-person seminar because some people, supposedly 80%, still don't feel comfortable of going out and engaging in a social networking environment. Um, if you have the ability to record a seminar, or record a gathering, you know, put on a podcast live, something like that, that's something that's very valuable in today's time. And I think the people that do that the right way, that perfect that, will stand out and your audience will be, you know, that much greater. Uh, next, closing deals in the quickest time frame in your marketplace. You know, everyone comes out and says, you know, no one can close a deal in 15 days. No one can close a deal in 20 days. No one can close a deal in 30 days in this type of environment. You know, I laugh and I say, well, you know, in 2009, I closed the deal in three days. And that's only because Saturday and Sunday were in between when I submitted the application to Monday's closing. Um, I think if you're partnered with the right lenders, right, you guys can close deals in a quick time frame. So if you know that you can close a deal in 15 days and give that service, market that, advertise that. Um, and when people say there's no way you could do it, they're giving you that challenge to go out there and accept that challenge. Now, if you know you can't close that deal in that time frame, same thing. Don't go out there and say you can close it unless you're 100% positive, guaranteed that you're going to close that deal. Um, consumer reviews. A lot of people go out there and forget to get consumer reviews. And a lot of people go out there and market their consumer reviews. Uh, the consumer wants to know what other consumers are saying. That's why Yelp is in business. That's why Social Survey, which is now experience, is in business um, because consumers rely on other consumers. Obviously, not all consumers tell the truth, but I believe that if you incorporate all of these things into your reputation and philosophy, your overall profile as a professional will stand out that much more. I do believe you need to pick one, if not two of these things to really double down on. So the key takeaway from this, like anything, you got to pick your poison. You can't, you can't be the expert in all these things, but when you pick your poison, you need to market it. You need to market the heck out of it because that's what people, 
people are going to know you for. That's what people are going to know your brand for. When they hear your name, they're going to say, wow, they get the tough deal done. Wow, they have the best rates. Wow, they have the best customer service. Wow, they host really great consumer education seminars. These are all things that are right at your fingertips. You just got to take advantage of them. So I'm sure everyone here today is wondering about building relationships. I think it's the most important thing in the marketplace. I don't believe a lot of people do it the right way. You know, so how do you build lasting relationships? I think, again, this is the most important factor in any relationship. It's by doing business and building relationships with people you actually like and want to do business with. Um, I remember back in 2010 and 11, you know, I had a lot of referral partners. Like I said, prior year, 2010, you know, I had about, I don't know, 83, 84 different people I closed deals for. And uh, I looked back the year after that, and you know, I was closing deals, 10, 15, 20 deals a year per referral source, you know, pretty big scale business. And I said, yeah, I really don't like this person. This person acts like they own me, you know? They call me and I don't answer and they're telling me like they're gonna give business to someone else. You know, nothing ever seemed good enough. And I slowly but surely cut those people off or wound them out or gave them, you know, to people that worked under me because truth, I didn't like doing business with them. You know, when my phone rang, I cringed. If your phone rings or your text message goes off or your email alert comes about and you see a name and the name makes you feel a certain way inside, you need to address that. Um, I think more people, because everyone wants to be number one, everyone wants to do business, everyone's worried about the next deal. We forget that sometimes there are bad relationships and there are bad referral sources or there are relationships and referral sources that don't match you know, with who you are and what you do. Um, so finding people that you genuinely like and doubling down on those relationships is the most important thing for you know, quality of life in this business as well as like, keeping a smile on your face. You, know, you don't want to wake up every day feeling anxious or feeling underappreciated. So when you find people that you like, make sure you're focusing on them. I always say stay as close to 50-50 as possible. Um, if you have somebody that gives you 10 mortgages and you close them and you're doing your job properly, that's, that's good. But you need to give more value. You know, if you referred them to buyers and they gave you 10 mortgages, you know, you're, you're, you're nurturing that relationship. You're staying close to that, you know, 50 yard line as possible. Um, what, ha what tends to happen is people start giving you business. You do your job, which is what you're supposed to do, but you don't reciprocate in certain ways, whether it's marketing or lunches or dinners or co-hosted events. And then eventually that person says, well, you know, I gave you 20 deals. You know, what are you doing for me? And your response is, well, I'm closing your deals, which is true. Unfortunately, that's not enough in this marketplace. Um, so you have to figure out what your value add is. And again, you have to stay close to that 50-50 as much as possible. Big believer in the whole gift get model. That's what I did my entire career. Um, I would give whatever it was, lunches, dinners, you know, books, everything. Uh, depending on what the market called for, I would give them something. Um, now, you don't want to over give and you don't want to give to somebody that isn't appreciative of what you're getting. So it's kind of a gray area, but you know, again, if you walk into a realtor's office and you give them 10 of my books, you know, see who engages, see who's appreciative, see who says thank you, and then focus on those people. Um, if the other people don't say thank you, you at least know that you put the ball in their court with the best intentions in mind. But you have to figure out very quickly of who's appreciative of your gifts and then who's just gonna take your gifts. There's a lot of people out there that just take, 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 and never reciprocate back. Um, and you have to figure that out, figure out the psychology of why they're not giving back. And if they're gonna keep taking, then you gotta slowly cut them off. Another thing, you know, mortgage people are always known for not telling the truth, not keeping their word. Um, I hate to say it, but unfortunately that's, you know, from 2007, 2008, 2009 and today's, you know, hot market that we're in, you know, hey, I'll get back to you in an hour and it's three hours later. Um, not that you're not keeping your word, you're just not telling the whole truth, unfortunately. So if you could do a deal, tell people you could do a deal and be confident in that. You know, if you can't do a deal or you can't get your mortgage commitment in a certain time frame, just make sure you're communicating that. I've learned that over communication uh, solves a lot of problems down the road and puts out fires before they're even started. So if you keep your word and you tell the truth, people are going to be able to rely on you and keep coming back to you. It's like a well-oiled machine. You can get further with a well-oiled machine than you can with something that keeps breaking down. You know, so when you tell somebody you can do something, make sure you can deliver on it. Don't 
just say something to say something to look good in the moment because I can come back to bite in the butt after the fact. Again, overcoming obstacles and challenges with communication. I think the more you communicate, the more you'll get ahead of a problem before it comes a problem. So if you give somebody a pre-approval and you realize their credit score needs to get up a little bit, communicate that early on. Um, if you get the alert that your you know, house under appraised, communicate that early on. Don't wait till the last minute. You know, don't sit there and wonder what to do. As soon as you find the problem, address the problem with the appropriate parties. I feel like, again, mortgage people are very afraid of looking bad or not knowing a solution. Uh, so they delay, they delay, they delay. And then when the hourglass, the time glass runs out, people are like, why didn't you tell us sooner? You know, the sooner you address the problem, the sooner you can come to a solution. And the more confident you are in your craft, the more you'll be able to deliver that message. Again, I think another underutilized uh, source in the business world is find, finding commonalities. Um, funny story, back in the day, I was asked to, so Halstead's a big real estate company in New York City, multi-billion dollar company, um, really runs the New York City marketplace, and Wells Fargo was their in-house lender. And it came out that Wells Fargo was paying them anywhere from like $1 million to $2 million per year per office to be their marketing you know, specialist in-house lender. Um, so I walk in as a small mortgage company. First of all, you know, I wasn't even making a million dollars. So I couldn't pay them a million dollars and they had an exclusive relationship. Um, but I went in there every single day and went into the Harlem office almost every single day. One of the wholesale offices every day for about two years straight. So finally I walked in one day, suit and tie, you know, I'm 20, I was like 25 years old. And the guy's like, Hey, uh, I, I just got made the, you know, um, the GM, the general manager of the Halstead softball team. Do you want to play softball? I'm like, I never played softball before. So I wound up accepting the invitation. The game was that night. He invited me that night. Uh, so I came and, you know, it's me and then all Halstead players, you know, all realtors for Halstead. And they were like, oh, we recognize you. You're the mortgage guy, whatever, whatever. You know, where do you play? I'm like, look, you can put me anywhere. So they put me in left field. And I'll never forget, a guy hit a deep ball. I caught the ball all the way on the warning track. And the runner on first base went to go try and like, you know, obviously the ball I thought was gonna get hit over my head. He ran all the way to second base. Didn't think I was gonna catch the ball. Caught the ball and I threw the ball from left field all the way back to first base and threw him out. And literally after that inning, everyone was come up to me like, hey, you know, I got this deal I'm working on. Hey, I got this, you know, mortgage. My client might need some help. Hey, my aunt wants to buy a property. And I'm like, I've known you for two years now. You've never once given me a lead. You've never once said you've given me business. Well, Fargo was everything. But now, because I just threw somebody out and helped us win this game, now all of a sudden you want to do business with me? All right. So I signed up for five or six different softball leagues. I played 150 softball games from April through August every year from 14, 2014, all the way through 2017. Um, and I still get hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue referrals per year from the softball players alone. So I tell you that story in the sense that whether you like to dance, whether you like to read books, do yoga. You have kids in the same school, like you got to find commonalities that you can network with people softly on what you really love to do. And then you'll ancillary get business from that. You know, if your kid goes to school with the realtor's kid and your kids are friends, and you're grabbing a coffee together. Hey, you, you do real estate. Hey, you do mortgages. You know, it's a very natural sequence of obviously relationship building. And I think people need to get back to that more, especially in today's day and age when a lot of people have been cooped up in the house for a long time. So when you get back to what people actually love to do and you have that same level of interest, it makes that much easier of a marriage to do business and put money in each other's pockets. Key takeaway, biggest thing like anything in life, whether you're married, not married, in a relationship, anything, any relationship, in my opinion, boils down to being at the 50 yard line. So the closer you sit to 50, 50, the more that relationship is gonna thrive and flourish. The more it starts to pull one way, resentment builds, frustration builds, and you know you got to try and you know, work harder to pull that back. So if someone buys you a cup of coffee, you buy them the next cup of coffee. Someone gives you a lead, you give them a lead back, or you, you know, maybe pay for a marketing ad or something along those lines. So in that way, you know, it's a give and take, and that's how I've seen the best relationships flourish. Keeping your word. One of the biggest things, the residual impact of keeping your word is like nothing else. You know, a lot of people always say, hey, I want to, this realtor's not giving me business. This realtor's not giving me business. 
Well, that realtor may be in business for five, 10, 15 years. Their brother might be a mortgage person. Their uncle might be a mortgage person. Their broker may require them to use a mortgage person. Uh, I swear to God, I'm a two and a half year old. I've never asked a realtor for business in my entire life. I would do my job, be perfectly positioned for when they need me, when they called me, when they emailed me to be there to help them solve their problem, to help them look better on a transaction. And that allowed me to have less stress. I just went out there to you know, network with everybody, let people know I did what I did and I was good at what I did. And then one day they pick up the phone and call you because their person dropped the ball. There's much less pressure being a backup than being a starter in this business. You could always do wrong if you're the starter, uh, but as a backup, you could only do right. So I think if you position yourself properly, you will be getting more business than you can imagine. Just don't come across desperate, come off as helpful and knowledgeable, and people are going to want to eventually give you business. I always say this, you know, you have to expect the unexpected call from the unexpected source. You might meet a person today and they might not call you till November. And you're like, oh yeah, I remember when I met John on April 13th. Uh, wow, John, you called me. Why'd you call me? Oh, well, I found you know, your card on my desk or you know, I saw your social media post. I remember when we met, we should do business. Yeah, I remember in our business, a lot of people drop the ball. A lot of people are ups and downs. They're good, they're bad. They're good, they're bad. They're responsive, they're busy, they're slow. So you know, in our game, the key is the consistency of it. Um, and you never know when you're going to get that phone call, text, or email. And the key is being ready. Uh, so you got to prepare yourself to be ready for when that unexpected call comes in. You know, same thing. Like you might not be somebody's go-to mortgage person. That's okay. You understand that. You're only one person. You have to find your top 10, 15, 20 go-tos for your referral sources that use you all the time. And everyone else falls into that 80, 90, 95% bucket. Uh, the key is when that bucket calls you, you have to deliver. If they give you your shot and you drop the ball, you're not going to get another shot. When they call you and you deliver, now you're slowly working up your value and now your stock's rising. Now they're going to start trickling you in more deals. You know, knowing you are the go to source and the expert, I think makes you very valuable. A lot of realtors. Um, are not great at what they do because they don't have the experience, especially with today's market movement. Um, I project realtors nationwide to go from, there was 1.4 million realtors, I believe last year. I see that number going north of 3 million realtors licensed that they actually do business uh, over the next decade, um, at least up over 2 million, probably by the end of next year. Unemployment's high, self, you know, self-employment's cool, entrepreneurship's cool, real estate's hot. So all these people are getting the real estate licenses thinking it's easy to become a realtor. Uh, you want to be that well-rounded source, that go-to source so people can come to, to trust and give them valuable advice. The more that you're viewed as an expert, the more people are going to come to you, which again, inevitably you're going to get more mortgage business from. So I think being a well-rounded source, is probably one of the most valuable you know, titles you could have. Um, and again, I think people tend to shy away from everything else that doesn't scream mortgage. You know, so if you understand real estate or taxes or advice surrounding mortgages and real estate, go out there and put that out there. So people come to you, uh, not directly for a mortgage, maybe for a credit score, and then you're able to backdoor your ability to sell them mortgage. Key takeaway, like anything, you know, be consistent, be reliable, be honest. You know, that goes without saying. I think the key word in that is consistency. You know, you can't be great for two days and then, you know, no one can reach you for two days. You can't be great on one deal and then drop the ball on another. If you're consistent, you will 100% be able to grow your business. Making money from your phone. You know, I learned this uh, back in 2017. A lot of people like to consume content and scroll, whereas you should be using your content to create. Um, I think... You need to worry about the consumer first. When you're dealing with social media, now your consumer is obviously a, a prospective mortgage borrower, whether it's a, somebody buying a home, refinancing their home, or actually a realtor, right? Uh, education needs to be first because if you can educate people, people are going to want more. There are very few sources where you can actually get consistent education regarding real estate and mortgages, whether it's interest rate updates, whether it's home sales in your area whether it's closing times, whether it's a new mortgage guideline, whether it's an appraisal guideline, 
every day you should be putting something out with the intention of educating the consumer. Educate your realtors on what the process is, uh, once the appraisal's in, about attorney reviews, about quality control, all these different things that you could be educating on. Uh, the problem is no one does it consistently. Get so wrapped up in your business, you forget to slowly put out content to develop your new business. I call it your farm system, like in baseball. You, know, you might not be ready for the major leagues, well, that's your consumer. You wanna slowly educate them from single A, double A, triple A. And then when they feel confident of going to buy a home or refinancing, they're coming to you because now they're ready to step up to the major leagues, but it's your job to cultivate them and groom them your way. So I get some pushback on this sometimes, but you have to train your consumer referral sources subliminally. You can't go out and say, here's what I'm doing and why. You need to groom them to do business the way you want to do business, the way that you find your system works best. And if you don't do that, then that's your own fault. Um, in today's day and age, like I said, we control everything based on what we post. You know, so if you post, you know, get your tax returns ready if you want to get pre-approved for a mortgage, people are going to read that. One person might actually do that. You need to train your consumers and referral sources to what you believe. So in that way, when they come to you, they're already prepped. You know, they've already done the hard work. They know what to expect. Otherwise, they're going to come to you with what they think is right. And now they're going to create more work from you, uh, for you. And then you're going to be like, well, I don't work this way. And they're going to say, well, this is how we work. So the goal is to slowly train them uh, to make them understand and see your point of view as to why you're doing something and creating that context around why you're doing something. So if you require tax returns, W-2s, bank statements, and a credit report at time of application to get pre-approved, post that, tell them that, and explain why you need each. And I think people, if they do that, their business will come in much easier because now people are knowing what to expect. Encouraging you know, discussion and questions. You, know, you could post, hey, what, what do you think about interest rates? You know, do you think a 3% rate is a high interest rate? You want to encourage that discussion. So now you can slowly filter out who's serious, who knows what they're talking about. If realtors start commenting, now you can engage in those realtors. So you can use social media kind of as like a carrot. You got to dangle that carrot in order to see who bites on it. And then you'll know who's actually interested and who's reading your posts, uh, who's commenting to look like a superhero, and then who's commenting that needs more education. And at that point, obviously, you're able to send them a private message and then slowly coach them into you know, a, hopefully a prospective lead. Here's one of my biggest pet peeves. You know, I watch, you know, a lot of social media, Facebook and Instagram, and a lot of people comment, just to comment. And I think it actually hurts their brand and reputation, especially mortgage people. You know, someone will post on Facebook like, hey, need a lender in Virginia Beach. Uh, hey, need a lender in Virginia Beach that could do this deal. And then someone will post something completely crazy, like I got the best rates in town, use me. And it, to me, that looks desperate, right? So if you want to be a professional, you know, maybe if you see that post, maybe you send them a private message, you know, with a private write-up. Um, you don't post and comment just to post and comment to like create noise. You want to create value. So I go on a lot of Facebook groups and I see who comments, and I see what the posts are. Um, and you can really get a good feel for where the consumer is and where they lack the education. You may even reply to a post in your own post. So if I put, for example, hey, I really need a no doc mortgage up to a 90% loan to value. You know, we all know it doesn't exist. So maybe you take that and you post on your own Facebook, hey guys, we do not, no document, you know, non-QM mortgages, up to 75% financing, 25% down payment, 25% equity, and you create your posts from there. I think a lot of people, again, comment just to comment and they don't give the consumer the right information. And then that consumer winds up going down the rabbit hole and then hopefully not having a bad experience, but usually having a bad experience with somebody that's just commenting to comment. So if you strategically comment, you'll build a name for yourself, a brand for yourself that costs you nothing to do uh, and become the industry expert. I love, I always love doing this. You know, make an interactive post with giveaways and lender credits, you know, post, for example, Hey, anybody that comments on this post, get a, you know, application fee waiver or, you know, get $100 off your closing costs, whatever that might be. Uh, it just incentivizes people to engage. You know, realtors are going to be like, hey, uh, at whoever, this person's giving away $100 off their application fee. Let's give them a shot. If anything, they at least see it and know that you're willing to give back in a market where 
lenders aren't looking to give back. So that would help you stand out to show, hey, look, we're here to do business, we're here to make money, but we're also here to you know, give you some cost savings or whatever the case might be. You want to make sure you're engaging the people that are following you. Otherwise, again, like you're out of sight, out of mind. You know, every day when somebody wakes up, they usually go right to social media first. I think 83% of people actually do that. It's proven. Wake up, right to your social media. So maybe in the morning you post, hey, today's whatever, $5 Starbucks giveaway for anybody that gets pre-approved, whatever the case might be. If you do that, you will absolutely get leads from it. And people will start looking out for your profile to see you know, what your daily giveaway is. So that's just a little incentive on to what to go out there and post and what to do. But you know your marketplace better than I do. The key is just being consistent with it. Biggest thing again, you know, digital document, documentation is key. You control the story, you control the narrative. You could be the worst mortgage person in the world, right? Put on a suit and tie, go up in front of your camera every day and say, hey, I just closed 10 deals. Average rate was 2.75% at 30 year fixed rate, no points. And you could post that. And that's what everyone thinks you are. Everyone knows you are. So you can do what you want to do on social media. The key is to actually do it. A lot of people, again, just consume content rather than create content. If you get comfortable with doing this, you will absolutely organically generate leads that cost you zero dollars. Confidence and knowledge. Confidence and knowledge are always going to win you the referral source um, if you stick to the facts. If you don't know the facts, you know, don't just come up with anything. You know, stick to what the facts actually are. You know, if a client needs to put 5% down, tell them they got the 5% down. You know, if the loan to value max is 80%, tell them it's 80%. Don't see if you could do more than 80%. Uh, the key is knowing the guidelines and then being able to properly communicate the guidelines into the average person's terms. I think a lot of people in our profession use LTV, you know, back ratio. Consumers and realtors don't know that and they don't care to know that. So you need to break it down for them into something that they understand. So don't say 96.5% LTV, say, you know, we can only finance 96.5% of the purchase price, which means you have to put 3.5% down. That's sticking to the facts in a way that they can understand and diagnose the language. Another thing, you know, do not answer questions or inquiries of hot air. We spoke about that as far as commenting on social media posts. A lot of people just comment, comment to show that they're engaging. They're not always right. You know, I would rather be quiet if I don't know the answer than making myself look like a fool, which may eventually cost me business in the long run. You know, so when I answer somebody in regards to a deal, it's very black and white. And I always put it in writing. So if someone asks me a question over the phone verbally, I'll follow up with, hey, Sarah, it was great speaking to you. You know, just remember that we have to get your credit score up from 618 to 620 in order to qualify you for the FHA loan as we discussed. Not, yeah, you're good at 618 on a credit score. And then all of a sudden come to find out that you're not good at that. Um, so always directly answer the question, black and white, and then follow it up in writing. That way you can go back and reference it. Another thing where I believe, you know, law officers make a big mistake are not knowing the guidelines inside and out. Uh, you need to be able to creatively structure deals. And the only way you're able to do that is if you know the guidelines. You can't have one without the other. Um, so the more you know the guidelines, like the back of your hand, the more you can articulate to your consumer and your referral partners, your realtors, how much you know the guidelines. If you go out there and seem like a wealth of knowledge, people are going to want to do business with you. And I think that's where realtors, you know, black from a mortgage professional standpoint is most mortgage people say, Hey, yeah, again, we got the best rate. I want to do your mortgage. I do mortgages, but what's behind all that, you know, how much knowledge is in your brain? How much training are you doing? You know, how much are you keeping up with, you know, the banks going from a 56% debt ratio to a 54% debt ratio or a credit score increase or decrease. You want to be the first to report news to the market. So if you go out there and say, Hey, you know, by the way, I can now do X, Y, and Z loan program just came available today you're going to get activity from that because you look like you're ahead of the curve, not behind the curve. I think that's super important in this market is going out there and keeping consumers and referral partners up to date with what's new and what's now, not what everyone else is going out there and doing. So pretend you're like, you know, CNN or CNBC or Fox News breaking this brand new news story. And really all you're doing is going out there with ammunition to make yourself look like an additional wealth of knowledge. 
you know, be an expert as much as possible. I think mortgage people are put into a box like, oh, you're a mortgage person, you know, but don't forget, you know about credit, you know about debt ratios, income, assets, employment history, appraisals, you know, home insurance, all these different things, title insurance, you know, become the expert. If you go out there and say, hey, by the way, you know, we have a great appraisal management company. They do our appraisals in 24 hours. They return them to us in a week. Go out there and tell people that. Um, it looks like you have the right referrals inside of your team. And if you do that, people are going to be like, wow, that's great. I didn't know that ABC Mortgage can turn around an appraisal in a week when Bank of America takes three weeks. You know, go out there and educate the consumer on, hey, if you buy this house and you know, you pay $300,000 for it and it appraises at 290, it doesn't mean you're getting a bad deal. It just means that you're setting the new bar for where the market is. And if you go out there and explain to people what their options are as the expert, again, people are going to come to you as a trusted source and understand that not only do you know mortgages, but you know the entire industry, which makes you more valuable. As you just touched on, you know, becoming the know it source, people want to go to one place for accurate information. Um, that's why Google exists. People go to Google and trust Google as a source. You want to be the human Google of the world. You want people to come to you when they have any real estate related question. That way you can figure out either where to refer the business to. Hey, I just got hit by a hurricane. I need a home insurance company. Refer Prosper. Hey, I just uh, you know, got a tax appeal done. Do you know anybody that can do an appraisal for me? You want to be that person that people come to, to then put them in the right direction. And then when they need a mortgage, they're gonna come back to you in order to get the mortgage. So I think that's the biggest thing is really becoming that expert and understanding that you need to have the ability to funnel people in the right direction. That way people trust your knowledge. Key takeaway, practice makes perfect. You know, we're all gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. There's always gonna be an oversight, uh, but get better each day in each deal. Each deal gives you an opportunity to become that much more experienced. If you drop the ball, don't drop the ball again. You know, if you make one mistake, figure out how and when or where that mistake was made, and then make sure every time moving forward, I guarantee you're not going to make that mistake, especially if it costs you a deal, which costs you money, which costs you a referral source. So you know, every day, the goal is to get better, and every deal is going to make you that much better. Here's some helpful tips, you know, nostalgia. Um, when you follow my Instagram, you'll see, you know, I got back into sports cards, like football, baseball cards back in 2018. When I had a life altering, couple life altering events. You know, if you follow people's social media, you're going to see what they like. If you walk into someone's office or home, you're going to see what they like. You know, maybe you guys all liked comic books or Barbies when you were younger. You know, bring that stuff up. It's a very delicate situation and topic, but it can be very powerful and impactful to forming that relationship. And in today's world, most people give away, you know, what they're invested and interested in, um, you know, in, I guess, in a different sense, something new is also exciting, right? So if you go in someone's house and you see that they're a Atlanta Braves fan, all right, great, awesome, we're a Braves fan, and now there's a new baseball team in your town, you can talk about the new baseball team and go catch a game with them. It's new, it's exciting, it's different, so you're still using what you saw and what they showed you as far as how long they've been an Atlanta Braves fan for, but now you're talking about something new that they might not know about. Um, you could apply that to anything in life. You could talk about cryptocurrency, so the US dollar and gold and silver, and now you can talk about, oh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these other concepts. New creates exciting, and you need to apply that same business mindset to how you run your business. So if you come out there with a new marketing strategy, people are gonna be like, wow, that's great. I used to love getting your emails, but now I really love getting whatever you're going to obviously implement. And I think, you know, whether it's your lives on Instagram or your lives on Facebook, every time you do something new that's based around something that you know somebody wants, people are going to talk about it and it's going to create buzz. So you got to make sure that you're doing it the right way. And look, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to make errors. It's okay to have, you know, technology glitches, but create that new. So people, you know, slowly start to see what you're doing in order to hopefully jump on the bandwagon. Here's the other thing. The secret sauce is Facebook and Instagram. People post everything. They wear their heart on their sleeve. And if you look at someone's Instagram or Facebook, you'll know exactly how you can approach them to do business. It also weeds out the people you don't want to do business with. Um, you know, again, if you have kids, if you love sports, if you love dancing, if you love nature, if you love the beach, and you see somebody likes all those same things or one of those things, 
use that as a topic of discussion. Hey, I see you went to Virginia Beach. You know, wow, I was just there. Great place. What'd you think of it? What's a good spot? Hey, I'm going to Virginia Beach. You know, what restaurant do you recommend? Now you're engaging in conversation that you know they already like. And that's how you're able to instantly break down the barriers of, you know, stranger danger. And, you know, I don't know you. Why are you messaging me? Everyone wants to be the source. So if you go to them and put the power to them, they're going to come back with you most often than not with open arms. And, you know, again, really give you the best advice. So, you know, use Facebook, use Instagram. That gives you enough that you need to know about somebody in most cases. And then you'll figure out whether you want to do business with them. Um, follow them, like them, you know, make sure you engage with them accordingly. And I think that if you do that, you know, you will absolutely be able to cultivate relationships with the right people. Uh, Jeff, we did have a question in there. He said, um, sure. some, um, Junior asked, what's your stance on discussing politics? So I'm not, I'm not passionate about politics. I'm not a political person. Uh, what I will tell you from two or three posts I made on politics in the past five years, I personally recommend staying away from it, but I'm also saying that again, as somebody that's not involved in politics and never plans to be involved in politics, you know, I think it's a very sensitive, hot topic. Um, look, if you stand for it and you believe in it and you're that much heartfelt about it, I'm never going to tell you not to be yourself. I'm never going to tell you not to be genuine. And, you know, I'm never going to mute your voice. What I will tell you is if you're okay with potentially offending people and getting into distractive, heated, emotional, non-winnable discussions, do it. Um, at 34 with, you know, again, as young as that is, as much experience I had, you know, I tend to go down the path of least resistance. I have my own beliefs and everything in life. I just choose to post things that are more optimistic, more socially engaging on a positive level. Um, we're in a world today where if you post one thing that's borderline, you know, all, all the uh, people are going to come out and start attacking rather than having an open mind to ask why you believe a certain way. But for the long-winded answer, I would personally say stay away from that unless you know the audience that you're, you know, basically dealing with. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, so again, guys, do your research, you know, do your homework, be genuine. Uh, I thank Prosper for obviously having, you know, me give this presentation today. Um, before we get into the Q&A, I just want to touch on the Realtors Cookbook again briefly. So my recommendation would be, you know, buy these in bulk. Again, message me directly. I get you a much better price than Amazon. I want you all to, you know, obviously purchase this, but I also want you all to utilize this. And if you utilize this, I promise you, you're going to form relationships. Um, it's fun. It's easy to read. I think people, realtors need a breath of fresh air. You know, don't, don't get discouraged. And most importantly, as a mortgage professional, people are only going to value you as much as you value yourself. They're only going to respect you as much as you respect yourself. There are times you need to create boundaries. There are also times where you can't have boundaries, like in the market we're in right now. Um, there is going to be a lot more money made in the market. You see how hot the market is. Every deal is precious. Every lead is valuable. You need to make sure you're available 24-7. Sacrifice your quality of life now to create the quality of life you want in three or four or five years from now. You should be able to make a lot of money right now if you do things the right way. If you're not making money right now, let us help you make money the right way. Let us give you all of our valuable insight, our experience, our creative ways to help you cultivate the right referral sources. Um, again, everyone's goal is always to be number one. You don't have to be number one to be successful in this business. You could be number 10, 15, 20, you could even be number 50 and still make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to yourself. You know, make sure you're investing in yourself first and foremost. Make sure you're being smart with your money. Make sure you're going to plan for a rainy day because there will be bumps along the road during your career, during the economy, during the market cycle that we're in. Um, the market's booming right now and some people aren't borrowing money. Uh, the market's so competitive right now, you might have 500 pre-approved clients that can't get their offer accepted because you have an FHA mortgage and the sellers only want conventional. You're going to have all that. The key is just consistently waking up every day, get your routine in place, do the right thing, you know, put yourself in a position to win. Um, I wish I knew, everyone always says, you know, as you get older, like, I wish I knew back then what I know now. Um, I'm in a very fortunate, grateful position to be here speaking to you guys and giving you insight. 
on where I made mistakes, on what I recommend, and what I see for the future. Biggest thing, double down on yourself. Be true to yourself. Um, Jim Carrey, you know, the actor said, basically, people go into depression when they're not being true to themselves, right? Because you're fighting something. You know, so if anyone's experiencing any tough time because of COVID, because of the market, financially, personally, you can come out of that. But you got to be true to yourself. And the number one way of doing that is just investing in yourself, who you surround yourself with. Um, but I believe you all have the resources in today's day and age in 2021 to have a virtual community, uh, to find people that have common interests. And again, a deal is not always worth what's going to cost you mentally, physically, and emotionally. No amount of money is going to make you happier than dealing with the right people and the right referral sources. So if you guys just take one thing away from today, you know, clean up your referral sources. Just because someone sends you 50 leads, if all 50 of those leads aren't qualified, headache, not appreciative, you know, maybe you cut that referral source loose. Uh, sometimes in this business, less is more. Um, so I know we're going to take it now to the q and I'm going to turn this phone video off and hop onto the laptop so we get into the q and I hope you guys, you know, bring some very valuable questions. And I have everyone muted. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself and feel free to ask it. Or if you want to throw it in the chat box, I am happy to ask the question on your behalf. Can you guys hear me on here? We can just hear you. Turn this volume on. Hold on one second. Can you guys hear me on here? Yes, we can hear you. We can't see you though. Okay. There you are. No, um, can you see me now or no? Yeah, we can. Um, your the end of your slideshow is still showing up. So. Uh, okay. Okay, let's just do this. We'll do, we'll go right back on here. All right, and I think we might have some questions coming through. A lot of thank you and enjoyed the presentation. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, okay, Amy Carr has a good question for you, Jeff. How are giveaways online to engage consumers, such as $100 off closing costs, etc.? How, hold on one second, I need to go down. How oh, I'm is, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, what was the question? Okay, so how are giveaways online, oops, it keeps moving. <laughs> how are giveaways online to engage consumers such as the $100 off closing, et cetera, how is that impacted with CFPB laws? Is that um, allowed? So I'm not an expert, as you know, in the CFPB, I never wanna give you the wrong legal advice, but I will tell you is as long as you make an offer available to everybody um, and this, not an incentive to use a certain service provider, you should be okay with that. Um, so again, if you post publicly, anybody that comments or the first person that comments on this post gets a free, whatever, a $399 lender credit, that's totally fine. What you can't say is, hey, if you apply here, you have to use this attorney or you have to use this realtor. You can only offer what your company is, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. And then another question, um, during your presentation when you were talking about um, the realtors and like who you, know, who you want to do business with, um, you mentioned you know, cut them off. So how, do, how have you personally um, handled that in the past, like cut agents off? Look, I don't want to make myself sound bad, but at age 23 and 24, I did it a little bit differently than I do today at 34. I think a professional conversation has to be had. And I think everyone knows who they are deep down um, and having the appropriate conversation can come in many different ways. It might be like, let's say Joe's the realtor. Hey Joe, you know, look, I appreciate all your referrals, right? Before you send me a referral from now on, can you please ask your client what their credit score is, what they think it is. So that way, by the time you send me 50 people, all their credit scores aren't 400, right? Or, hey Joe, would you mind asking your clients if they actually have a job before you try and tell them that they could buy a home? Have that conversation up front and also be strategic about how you're having it and where you direct them to. So maybe you bring a junior loan officer on or somebody that's doing no business inside your company and say, hey, look, I can't handle this guy anymore. 
I know you're trying to develop your business. This would be good practice for you. Here, deal with Joe. Joe, I'm going to pass this on to you. I'm stepping in more of a management role. And that way you're kind of gracefully leaving opposed to just like I did back in the day, I would just change my, change my phone number at one point. Um, because again, you know, dealing at the time it was and the demographics I dealt with, it was a lot of work and it became more work than reward. So I think at first address it professionally and then maybe look to pass it on to somebody in your company where if they close a deal, you'll still be able to earn, but you're taking a lot of that, you know, frustration and nonsense and, uh, you know, non-rewardable work off your plate. Great, thank you for that. Oh yeah. You're welcome. Um, let's see. Hold on, I'm going here. So Catherine says she's been going to open houses to connect with more realtors face to face and grow her business. What is the best way to continue to stay in front of them and keep it authentic and begin building a relationship first? Some of the agents have not replied to her calls and emails. I guess when she's followed up from those open houses. Great question, and I'm going to answer that twofold. So um, uh, I'm going to use an analogy, and I apologize in advance if it offends anybody. So let's say 100 guys walk into a bar, and there's only one female standing there, right? There are 100 guys that are trying to attract one female, right? Now, the female has 100 options, whereas, you know, the guys don't have as good of odds. Um, that's how it is in today's world with mortgage people and realtors, right? Every single realtor, and I've owned, just so everyone knows that doesn't know, uh, I owned the Remax from 2010 to 2014, and I opened up a real estate brokerage in New Jersey for three years. So I understand how realtors are, and I understand how much they are harassed, okay? So realtors are catered to. Um, the key is, like anything, giving realtors value that their current mortgage people are not giving them to. Um, if I was a mortgage person, I would not go to open houses and I would not host open houses. That's not your job. Your job is to do mortgages, right? You'd be better off hosting a home buying seminar. You'd be better off hosting a credit seminar. Everyone says, go to open houses, go to open houses, go to open houses. Also, with that being said, um, we're in the process of flipping a property here. And again, I'm not in the residential mortgage space at all, other than coaching and consulting at this point. But we had an open house on Sunday and not one mortgage person came. 17 people showed up. Only two came with their realtor, which means that 15 people came without a mortgage person and came without a realtor. Um, so the key would be dealing with the realtors that are loyal to you, that understand your value, and then asking them, hey, can you give me the open house sign-in sheet so I can call and get all these people pre-approved so I can calculate who's worth your time, who's not worth your time, and then pass them back on to you once you know I've pre-approved them. Now you're offering value, right? Hey, go look at the open house. You know, I think another thing is don't go out there and be your real estate company's marketing company unless they're actually giving you business. You know, people, mortgage people are like, hey, I'd love to do an open house flyer for you. Hey, I'd love to pay for mailers. Meanwhile, no one's ever given you business, right? So you want to stand out in your own unique way. And I think, again, you're better off spending $500 on 100 people, so $5 per person then $500 on one person, because if that one person fails, now you're out of luck. If you deal with 100 people and pay $5 for their Starbucks, it's a numbers game, right? So I'm sure if you deal with 100 people, 10 of them have to like you or want to be able to give you business or leads. But if you put all your eggs in one basket in this business, in this market, I wouldn't think it's a good strategy. Thank you. That's a really great answer. I hope that helped you, Catherine. Any other questions? Feedback, anything? It helped her, great. Well, I guess that's it. Jeff, yeah, thank anybody, you. So what I would say is if anybody has any more, uh, I guess, personal questions, mm -hmm. um, you know, feel free to email me. You know, obviously everything's kept private. Um, we do offer, along with my graphic designer, and chief technology officer, the ability for mortgage people to kind of get ahead of the curve, whether it's creating social media post templates or, you know, again, a webinar or uh, a, a podcast, whatever that might be. You know, you got to figure out how you personally are going to stand out in the marketplace, but you can't figure out how you're going to stand out in the marketplace until you develop, again, what you want to be known for, which was today's first slide. Again, you can't be known for everything, but 
you know, have fun with it. You have to forget, you have to remember, you forget that it's business for a second and realize that you still have to have fun and you have to love what you do. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are just running around chasing their tails. And I think if you work smarter, work more strategically and work on your routine, things are going to fall into place. The key right now is not getting discouraged. I think that there are going to be a lot of realtors that get into the business, but I think even more so that kind of just, you know, get frustrated and stop doing business. So maybe it's a time you go behind the scenes and kind of do like a referral check, see what deals you've closed, see who sent you the most amount of business over the last six months, let's say. Don't count refinances because those are not going to be here for forever. Count your purchase business, see where those deals came from, double down the people that gave you those deals. because Those are obviously ones doing deals in the marketplace. See how you could help people that have given you deals in the last six months because you've already done business with them. You probably had a great experience with them. They know who you are. Stay in front of mind. Why go out and try and kill when you've already killed, right? Um, you've already caught your fish. Now you all have to do is just make sure they survive. Problem is in this business, everyone wants to go out and look for the next thing, the newest referral source. Right now, you need to hunker down on what you have. Let the industry and market shake out a little bit. And again, position yourself for when everyone else is ready to give up and quit. Because there's going to come a time, like some of you have seen 07, 08, 09, but you can't get a mortgage person on the phone. They don't have their license anymore. Banks are going to close. Banks are going to be desperate. Just stay true to yourself. Again, in this business, less is more. And you need to realize the value of quality of life. Jeff, I have one more question for you coming in on yeah. the chat. Um, uh, Jennifer wants to know if you create um, marketing um, pieces to market to agents using um, like Canva or something else, or use some sort of tech system to send mass updates to agents and also videos. Do you use a certain program as well? Oh. I think it all depends on the loan officer's goals, right? Um, to answer your question, I have my own in-house marketing team and graphic designer. I call him the digital Picasso because he creates like beautiful masterpiece. You, got, you guys can go on my social media and tell what I've created and what he's created. Um, if he's busy and backed up and doing other things for me, I kind of just make something quick and like just get a message across. But I think in today's day and age, the loan officer should create a brand for themselves and the nickname for themselves in the market. So I had the mortgage quarterback. Um, it's a fun play on my passion, which is sports and helping people in the mortgage business. Um, and again, if you come to me, I'm gonna be the Tom Brady, if you will, and put you in the position to get your mortgage closed or put you with the realtor to get your home purchased or sold. So you have to have fun with it. Uh, but remember what you put out there is seen by everybody, right? If you're gonna create a video that you're gonna post to try and get business from, Make it clean and professional, but it's also expensive. It comes with a cost. There's nothing wrong with turning your camera on on your iPhone, saying, hey, everybody, interest rates just dropped to 2%. You should refinance. I'm telling you this because X, Y, and Z, post that. Don't be afraid to post that with, you know, let's say poor visual, but good audio. Now, if you want to put a classy product out there, I, su I suggest creating like a brand with a 90-day marketing strategy and go on that push so then that way, your marketing's consistent for 90 days. Also, you have to be clear on your message. Um, I think every single loan officer can use a refresher on their headshot, on their brand, on their motto, uh, and on their overall image. I, I joke and say, you know, a lot of people had, like, when you went to college, the freshman 15, they called it. I call it the COVID-19. A lot of people put on, you know, weight. Uh, I lose weight when I get stressed out. Uh, so I had to get some new clothes, but I feel like like everyone needs that refresher to start feeling good about yourself again, start getting back into that business acumen. And I can tell you what, if you create the right marketing strategy and you put it out there to the right referral sources, it will be noticed. Okay. If you don't take it serious, you're going to fall into the, you know, big endless ocean with every other mortgage person. So spending a couple thousand dollars, if you will, creating the right image brand videos, well worth it, especially right now. If you do it right now when everyone else is just worrying about the deals that they have and not worried about their brand and image, you know, when the market turns, you're going to be that much further ahead of them. I also don't believe in mass anything. You could post to social media, but everyone is looking for a different message. Everyone's at a different stage. So when you mass market, 85% of it goes wasted. Yeah, you might capture the 15% that are interested, but remember, everything changes daily. Um, so right now, I would really focus on what you're good at 
uh, focus on where your strengths are as a person, as a loan officer, as a company, and market that. Tell stories. Tell people how you managed to do business during COVID. The other thing I would tell you not to do, never post about how much business you do. Nobody cares about how much business you do other than yourself and the owner of your company. People don't want to hear that you closed 15 loans for $5 million. They want to hear how you helped the Smith family get a mortgage after they denied by another bank. Realtors want to know about how you saved the deal that Bank of America couldn't do. Now you're creating value. So let other people pat you on the back. Don't pat yourself on the back, especially on social media. It's always great to get that, but it's much more powerful coming from another source. So market strategically based on the ability to either develop your reputation or get yourself business. Thank you. She said, thank You're you. Welcome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Any other questions, guys? Uh, Jerry Bosnar. No more questions. Okay, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. We'll let you get back to your day and um, have a have a great one. Thanks, guys, so much. Thank we you appreciate, so much, it. Sarah, appreciate Jeff, it. Thank, Jeff, thank you. You, you killed it. It was uh, awesome. I appreciate it, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome, Reese. All right, everybody's getting off.